This is the Blockade Pimple Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, is Jared Morgan. Hey, everyone. How's it going? Uh, it's going somewhat well. <laughs> somewhat well. Okay. So well, that's better uh, than bad. Yes. Uh, folks, if it sounds like Jared's uh, speaking into a tin can... Um, so I did a thing. That's because I am. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I went ahead and uh, used up a good old gift card that I had been saving for purposes unknown uh, and finally decided, you know what? I need to get an, an SSD hard drive because I haven't had one of those before. And I need to bump my RAM up to 16 gigs just in an effort to make pinball effects run better, maybe. <laughs> yeah. And in the process of doing that, because I'd asked my buddy who's a, my computer guru, hey, what do I need to do ahead of time with the SSD? Do I need to, you know, what do I need to do? He goes, no, as long as all your files are on your hard drive and everything, you're fine. He goes, you're going to have to reinstall programs, but, you know, whatever. He goes, it's good to start, you know, clean and fresh now and then. I mean, I think you would agree with that. OBS. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I was like, okay, great. So I did just that, and then I loaded up OBS and realized, oh, crap, I didn't save any of the settings that we have that we use. And you guys Oops. know our history with OBS. It's, it's not a, pretty. It's a chicken pass is what it is. <laughs> it constantly is, like, not working for us the way that is intended. So I had to rebuild the thing from scratch, and in the process... I, for some reason, now have Jared with kind of tinny audio. And I don't know why. Tinny audio. Yeah. No, I don't know either. Oh, well. <laughs> mm. it, it is what it is. Yeah, that's right. Uh, in, in case you're wondering about the uh, Porg Fred and the uh, Star Wars t-shirt, I mean, I think, you know, it's a Star Wars celebration going on this weekend. Uh, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So I thought I would, uh, you know, decorate. And, and I even have... I, I rescued a uh, a friend from we call it property control over there at Disney. Uh, it's basically an employees Lost only. Lost and found. It, no, it's an employees only shop. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so it's for merchandise that's either been discontinued or is slightly damaged. Um, things they just can't sell to the public, basically. Oh, okay. Um, right. And so, Mister Porg friend, he came from there because he doesn't have a base to sit on your shoulder. Uh, oh, and also he okay. doesn't make any noise. This one, uh, oh. but then I also happen to find a Rathtar. Oh, cool! And when I got him, all of these little bumps were just brown because it had all rubbed off. And so oh, okay. I took the paint pens that I was intending to use for uh, firepower. Well, mm. Except for the colors, never looked good enough for me to continue coloring that in, and applied them to this guy. And so now he's all. Now he has the color. Now he's got the color and looks kind of cool. So, does he do anything, or does he just sit there and look? No, look if I if I push a button, there we go. He goes raw. He, he goes. Hold on, let's fire up, buddy. Ah, he vibrates. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Turn off. There we go. <laughs> there you go. There we go. <laughs> oh, the fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, the fun. Yeah, I, I can imagine. There you go. Put that uh, thing on the ground and watch it go around the floor. Yeah, it just pretty much bounces around in one place. And now you know why all the spots were rubbed off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Oh, you are the rescuer of toys. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what I'm, I'm hoping that at some point I'll be able to rescue maybe a lightsaber that's a... Uh, for sale cheap there because I know somebody that just did it literally had a label on it that said does not work and all it needed was batteries <laughs> okay <laughs> so they picked up a $200 hilt for 45 bucks <laughs> wow okay yeah. that's quite that's quite an expensive battery that goes into there <laughs> right <laughs> so that's a good deal well, I wish you luck getting um, uh, getting a, a glow stick Yes. Uh, from there. Exactly. Yes. Um, what are we going to do? What are we talking about today, Jared? Hmm. I wonder. Mm -hmm. There's some. There's a little bit of extra content added to a certain pinball game. That oh, we yeah, all know that. Of. Yeah, we could talk about that. 
Let's... I guess we maybe should. Mm. Um, I am going to mention, uh, and I, I I sent Jared a message. I didn't read if he saw the message. <laughs> yes, I I did, and no, I I haven't got contacted about this thing. Gotcha. Okay, so um, uh, got contacted to ask if I wanted to uh, take a look at a brand new game uh, that's coming out uh, June second. Uh, which is Gravatar? Uh, what is it? Gravatar Reimagined or, or Recharged? Something like that. It's the old mm. Atari Gravatar game, which is a pain in the butt game using the same uh -huh. kind of uh, mechanics that uh, Asteroids used to use. You know, turn left, oh. right, and thrust, and, and a fire thrust. button. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Uh, except for you have to also navigate a maze. <laughs> Basically, oh. that's what you're navigating through. Wow! Um, but this With is all inertia. That yeah, would be so hard. But this is all uh, updated graphics and new, but same mechanics kind of thing. So they mm -hmm. want me to uh, take a look at it and uh, maybe talk about it. So I think we're if I can get Jared in on this, then we can do a joint review of it. Do a joint review of it. Um, something to look forward to next time. Just yeah, it's a little bit different there. than what we normally cover on the show. Yes, but. but I mean, I think you can, if you went on Steam right now, you could see probably a preview video of it. Like I said, mm. it's releasing on June 2nd. Um, yeah, that'd be on the um, Steam wishlist system now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, okay, yeah, so today, uh, obviously, a new pinball show just debuted. Um, some new info dropped, uh, if you can tell by the title of the episode here. Sword of Fury. Monsterverse Pinball, and Cab Mode. Where do you want to start, mm. Jared? Let's start with Swords of Fury. Let's I think. start. Okay, well, we'll, we'll dive right into the meat and potatoes. You got it. Mm. <laughs> yep, it's, let's do it, because I haven't yet had a chance to catch up with the pinball show. So mm. I have seen on Discord chatter about the other tables, but I'm coming really fresh to this, so mm. we can talk about it from that perspective too, which might be a little bit unique. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, so uh, Swords, and F Swords of Fury. Some of you might remember this actually was released also in the Pinball Arcade, but it was in mm. the final season of Pinball Arcade. Uh, yep. And so that final season of Pinball Arcade, most people kind of, it like, everybody's kind of like, what came out in that season? <laughs> Then there's a reason for that because not a lot of good stuff did. It well, was mostly only, got leaves. It was not only just like not a lot of good stuff, but it also got dwarfed by the fact that Farsight was losing TPA or losing all the mm. Williams license. Um, you know, it's the same thing with uh, uh, that Bonsai Run was in that release. Hardly anybody talks about it because just a lot of people didn't get it and it didn't have yeah. time to uh, have people play it and hype and talk about it because everybody was talking about the loss and then Owens oh. ends getting Williams. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of like yeah. that whole last it season just up. kind of dithered away. Um, So it's good that, that Zen is hopping on board with this. It's also good because Zen has improved it. <laughs> oh, quite markedly. It's, uh, it's a very different game to what Farsight did. Yeah. Yeah, go graphically and gameplay wise, it's it's better. It's different as well, um, but I think it's better overall. Well, Jared, whatever there was in that drink of water, it cleared up your tinny sound. <laughs> hey, it's magic water. <laughs> it's not, that's that's Cheers. pretty impressive there. Um, mm. So I thought what we would do first here is why don't we take a look at uh, Zen's trailer for Swords of Fury, and uh, we can discuss from there. So I have this. Yeah, sounds good. I have this already here on the on the YouTubes, and let's just give it a go. Unleash the fury of this 1988 solid state classic. Old in a world of sword and sorcery. That's a he, he's <laughs> definitely uh, got got a lot of spit happening there. He's, <laughs> That's a lot of spit. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Things to note. Uh, this is a System 11 Williams table. Uh, it is. We all love the System 11. System 11 Bravo, to be precise. Okay. Um, do you want to be nerdy about it? Which we do. Not uh, designed by one of the big hitter names that we typically talk about. Um, to the fact that I honestly forget who is the designer of that one. Yeah, me too, actually. Quickly Google. Quickly do the search. <laughs> yeah. Do it, Jared. I've got too many other things on my uh, desktop. <laughs> All right. I will do it. Stand by. Standing and by. talk about other um, things. But uh, one of the things that stands out to me is this is probably one of the, in terms of the Zen enhancements that get put on it, this one's very subtle. I mean, very mm. subtle. There's not much that Zen added to this other than obviously the uh, Balrog. And yeah, I was going to say that small. It's, it's, there's not a lot going on visually enhanced in here, except when you get to multi-ball and you get sparkles on the balls. The balls are sparkly. Um, they have the sparkly trails. No, them. stop. Ah. What? Again. Yeah, start the video. Oh, no. Again. Yeah. Oops. Lol. <laughs> but I found out who it's designed by. Okay, and yeah, you're right. It's not really by anyone that's really, like, not really well known. It's actually Steve Kirk and Tony Kramer. Um, art's by Doug Watson and music is by Brian Schmidt. Hmm. Hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's sort of like the, I'd like to say the B team, okay. probably, of the time. Um, so, although I think Steve Ritchie didn't really come in until sort of, uh, later, um, after this table, so no. you know that sort of era was. No, Richie was of... already in with Black Knight. Oh, uh, nineteen eighty-eight. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this one was released um, June twenty-four, nineteen eighty-eight. Oh, okay. um, so maybe it was around the same time. Yeah, it's it. I think this is when we started to get the uh, you know. The designers of the era coming through. Well, because I know in '88, um, uh, Lawler released Earthshaker, which yeah, is what I, I think... kind of consider his uh, first very like very Lawler table. <laughs> yeah, real. you know that, that one screamed Lawler. Uh, it was 1989 for Earthshaker, so one year after um, Swords of Fury. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Um. Other interesting thing, there ain't no pop bumpers on this table. No, it's not. It's another one like um, there's not too many tables that don't have pop bumpers on them. The only one I can think of is Judge Dredd is the other one that doesn't have pop bumpers. Um, well, I mean, yeah, I right, like one... what is it? Uh, Grand Lizard uh, doesn't. Um, does Big Guns have pop bumpers? I don't think that one does. Mm, I think it might. I don't know. Hmm. But there are a few out there that they just went. You know what? No, we're putting uh, we're putting money into the bill of materials in other areas. I just wonder. Probably on this game, it just would have been the layout that would have prevented them having any pop bumper because there's just nowhere, no real feed area. Yeah, because it's all covered by the um, the upper play field, and of course on Black Knight and stuff like that, they took care of that by putting the pop bumpers on the top play field, which you know gives them access to it. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, there would have been nowhere really to put it on this game, unless I made it a wide body, which was not really a th well. It was a thing in that era, but not on games like this. Yeah, not on this. Uh, mm. it, it, it it's interesting. It has uh, two horseshoe loops, one right there close to uh, you know the bottom lower play field, and then one all the way up the the top. Uh, it's there's a, in a lot of ways its layout reminds me of those. The bizarre ballet tables that were coming out at the same time. Hmm. Um. When I say bizarre, they're they're kind of the ballets that you never hear about. <laughs> um. It, it, they all had just they were like trying new things, um, but none of them ever caught on. Uh, as opposed to you know, uh, what is that other ballet? Uh, uh. They weren't known as System Eleven. They were known as like B. System nine. No, no, they weren't even known as a system. That's what I'm saying. It was, it was, it was like a number system that went with it. Uh, weird or not strange science falls under that category. Uh, that's probably yeah, the most right. famous of that bizarre <clears throat> ballet kind of thing. Anyway, 
Um, so other games that don't have pop bumpers include Fire. Oh, yeah. Um, and in the modern era, No Fear as well doesn't have them. Um, uh, there's also apparently a game called Lightning as well. And Junkyard obviously doesn't have them. Mm -hmm. um, so Champion Pub's another one. Judge Dread. Um, and Shadow doesn't have it either. So there's a few out there without um, pop bumpers floating around. Blackwater 100 is another one that doesn't have pop bumpers. It's all about ramps and craziness in that game. So, okay. um, But you're right, Jungle Lord and, and um, uh, Grand Lizard, I think, are both ones that don't have them. It's basically anything with a lot of ramps because they don't have any room for pop bumpers without ramps um, on some of these games seems to be a, a trend. Certainly on the layouts they were trying out in the sort of 80s where they had like that sort of raised or upper play field area, you know? Right. I think mm. I said... Uh, no, I want to say it's... Hold on, let me see if this is correct what I'm looking at here. And you're all right. Big Guns doesn't have it either. So, nope, I would yeah. I thought, I thought I came across what the uh, prompt was, but... Uh, for the for the bally tables that I was thinking of, but no, it was um, a capacitor label. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, I'll I'll look. I'll I'll figure this out eventually. Um, yeah. So uh, the audio on Swords of Fury is definitely one of those. It's got that that kind of rock and soundtrack that just earworms itself into your head. Oh, and it's got that classic Yamaha sound of the of the era. And like this is that Yamaha FM chip was they were pushing it to its limits. And it's then. probably the first thing that you'll notice th in terms of differences between this and the TBA version, because mm. it's a much cleaner sound that Zen was able to uh, pull from this. Because they're directly emulating it, they're not they're not extracting the sounds, downsampling them, and mm. then uh, orchestrating them. Like uh, Farsight did, so, and I think I was talking about this with folks on on Discord about the differences, and that's why I think we're hearing differences with um, things like WPC era games like Whitewater and System Eleven games. They both use a similar chip, but the architecture of those two boards is very different. And I think because we're seeing direct emulation from Zen, that's why they're having troubles between eras that are using similar chips like the Yamaha chip because mm. the board architecture is different. The emulation framework will be different. And even though it's the same Yamaha chip, it's going to be a different way that everything's wired together digitally. So I think that's why they're having race conditions and weirdness with audio. That would be my guess. Interesting. Mm. Uh, visuals. Very crisp. Very crisp. Yeah. Um, mm. Again, this is something that, that Zen has just been knocking out of the park in terms of no matter where you look on the table, they're high res images. <laughs> Everything is high res, yeah. Yeah, there's no there's no shortcuts being pulled here. Um but and this new pass that Zen just did with darkening the tables, thank you, Zen. It mm, helps. Looks really good. You still gotta work on the ball. Because the ball still maintains the exact same brightness no matter where it is on the play field. I yep. really want it to be affected by the shadows of, of the table. Um, so that you actually, and, your eye loses the ball now and then. It's it's part of pinball. And definitely, and I know we'll touch on this later because it's part of the other tables, but with Circus Voltaire mm -hmm. and it's neon, mm -hmm. like there is a good light throw on it, but it doesn't nearly have the same effect as it does in real life. Correct. It's closer. It's definitely closer. Yeah. But there's still work to be done there. Because for sure the 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 light show is now more prominent because of the darker past. That's I mean, yeah, and, they, and it's that like is playing what I most room. wanted to see. Yeah, because um, mm. the light shows are amazing. That's that it's they are. You want to see it? Um, and I wish yeah. that I really want Zen as they're going through these tables and learning about emulating what Williams and Bally did with their light shows. I want them to incorporate that into their originals more. Mm. Um, Take some cues from the designers of the past and really get those light shows vibrant and something that, you know, would draw you over to the room if you saw them going off in a dark room. I mean, I'm sorry, shoot, just look at anything that Jersey Jack has put out and it's like <laughs> insane. That's probably a little bit are. 
It's taking you probably a degree too far in some cases. It is, but um, it is the goal to strive towards. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it is definitely you know eye catching. You can you can't dispute that. And I know that we uh, mentioned it with uh, with just the difference between Stern's Mandalorian and Zen's Mandalorian. The light shows are night and day. It's yeah, that's right. Not and unfortunately, point. Stern wins in oh, this case by a long like, mile. Yeah, by a long while. Yeah. yeah. Um, but. Uh, Again, looking at the enhancements of what Zen did, um, they basically put some potions up at the upper play field. They put the ball rug on there. They put the uh, art blades. and I do actually like the potions because it is it is kind of difficult in some cases to work out what targets are down over what column they're mm -hmm. in. And having those potions just like, you know, give you a little bit of visual pop and visual clue up the top there. Yeah. That's actually probably a good like a good um, use of visual enhancements um, in this case, I think. Um, so, yeah, I, I like that. Um, in fact, I, I think, don't think I've really seen a, a Swords of Fury that has had all of those drop target lights working properly. <laughs> um, so having, like, number one, seeing them all working, I go, oh, there's actually lights up there. Right, okay, that's good. Um, and or two, having those potions going off and giving you a much better visual indication when you hit them is is welcome. And I actually, this is a sort of, from a visual enhancements perspective, people are probably thinking, well, you know, there's not very really that much going on in this table, but I actually think this is the fine balance of visual enhancements that actually does what it says on the box, enhances the gameplay. Um, I don't think you need to do a lot in some cases on tables to actually make the the enhancements shine through. And this is, a, I think, a good example of restraint mm -hmm. in how enhancements are actually managed in games and how they could probably be applied in the future. So I brought this up just so that we can uh, talk through it. What I'm, what we're talking about here. Uh, yeah. So if you look up to the, the upper left, that's where the, uh, the play field is that we're discussing, um, mm -hmm. those little drop targets. Um, I wonder why I'm not being able to see my cursor on the screen. It's so nice when I usually can point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see if I can fix that real quickly here. No, it's doing what it should do. Nick. Nick minute OBS starts completely going down. We can't do the broadcast anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just for a mouse cursor. <laughs> right. I'm like, you know, I wasn't asking much, was I? Uh, like while you're trying to work out the finer points of mouse control in, in OBS, I can what I can say is uh, what surprised me, and I actually thought it was a bug initially, because I forgot it was there, is uh, on the right hand side, top right hand side of the playfield, you see that um, there's actually a loop shot that just dumps the ball back to the lower flipper. And I actually thought there was a collision mesh issue going yeah. on in that upper corner because the ball was just flying out randomly. Yeah. And I, I was going, what's going on there? And then I actually had to have a closer look at the playbook. I was going, that's hey, right. Was so you're talking ramp. about uh, it's, it's this loop that goes around like that, right? There's an No, not that one. It's the black ramp. So the black oh, ramp, ramp goes, you shoot the, the ball up the, the black ramp from that. Oh, this black um, ramp, yes. And it goes yeah, up and it goes here. up and then goes through both of those bypass gates and, and blobs out of that bottom bit. Right. Yeah, it, it just freaked me out the first time. I forgot that that was actually there, but yeah. and the ball feels like it's really going out of there. One thing I will say is I think, and this could just be um, uh, a case of this is Zen's copy of the table they have, but the flippers feel really strong mm -hmm. in this. Like they feel almost like they've got the wrong coil values in them because. Mm. The shooting that ramp with that much strength that it actually feels like it's almost wildly out of control feels probably a little bit overtuned. Well, it's interesting the, because the shooting, uh, and so you know, folks, the 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 image that I have up right now, this is of an actual sort of fury, not yeah, yeah. Zen's version. Not this is not Zen's. <laughs> yeah, no, because um, I just went with the first thing I found. Uh, shooting this black ramp up here, obviously, it's possible with this lower flipper, mm. but. Should it be so easy to hit? No, it should it really only. Should. It should be more about hitting it with this upper flipper. Correct? Yes, yeah, that's exactly right. In fact, you should like the other thing I found that from left flipper shooting up the Avenger ramp, which is that one at the right, this one uh, that goes here. underneath all of that assembly on the right hand side. Yeah, mm -hmm. that one there. 
that one uh, that one the ball flies up there really fast and that's not how it behaves on any of the swords of fury that i played okay like it's a bit of a struggle to get it up that ramp like you shouldn't be able to just like shoot up there and the ball goes up there every time to the upper play field it should be quite a challenge to actually get up to the upper play field and i'm finding myself up there way too much so um, folks basically what we're t so what happens is this avengers ramp and it basically merges with the uh, launch uh lane uh yeah, it, it does. shoots the ball which loops up i don't know how, it, it's, is it a kicker or is it just a uh no it's a, a natural loop? flow natural it's flow. just a loop sends yeah. it up to uh, this upper where there's a diverter so you'll either go across uh this bridge here drop into the upper play field or it'll come across to this uh have a trail right here which will dump you off uh doesn't into dump you off into this lock. here it dumps you off straight down here which then goes to this upper flipper it, it, Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I take it back. It dumps it off into this little lane right here, which, which basically, is a lane. yeah, if it basically, if it has a ball in it, that ball will immediately kick to out here and then come to your upper flipper. Yes. Um, like I said, it's a funky design. And there's like the way the balls are handled in that lock area is, is a product of the fact that. Like other lock areas, they don't have a ball release to the kicker. It's basically a direct kick. It so, reminds me of what eventually was used in Star Trek Next Generation uh, for that, you know, because that one, it had a long subway system for the ball to yeah, travel. Yeah, it had in. a stage so ball. Right. So it always just had it when stored there. So it wasn't a long wait. It was just like almost instantaneous. Um, yes. This feels like the precursor to that. <laughs> I think it does in a way. I think also it it's um it's there because of the way the ball system works. So when obviously people who have played this game already in FX, this won't be news to them. But yeah. when you shoot it up that left lane, it actually hits a, a saucer at the top of that lane, which is hidden under the the play field, mm -hmm. and then that saucer ejects the ball into that oh, um, into this lane right here. Yeah, the what they call the the power lock or the powers lane, where you go found power one. And it stores it in there. But um, if there's a ball in there already and it goes over that second rail, as you were saying, Chris, it yep. does instantly eject it out because there's no way of it separating the balls and ejecting one at a time. It'll mm -hmm. either eject none or all of them at the same time. So it's got to manage that staging. Um, the only difference, obviously, with that particular lock mechanism compared to TNG is that TNG will actively stage a ball between games, whereas this one, you have to do it initially yourself. Right. Yeah. Hey, hey try and clear something up for me because I haven't bothered looking mm. at it. where the heck do you collect the extra ball uh, the I've had this extra... extra ball lit and I have the, the this indicator lit and I have no clue where the extra ball is <laughs> I mm, I don't quite no, actually. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm going to have to look it up in the room I'm, I'm <laughs> scouring the play field now trying to look for it I have a feeling it might be um, in the um, the lock ball lane potentially that seems like where it would be i think that's where you shoot it in fact i think that's where i've shot it in the past and that's where you get it i think mm -hmm. one of those lights lights up okay um it could be the yeah i forget which one it is but i'm pretty sure that's where it is it's not at the top i don't believe i'm sure someone in the youtube comments when we uh, yeah. broadcast this will be able to help us out there so i'll just point so out that since know. this is up um things again that zen added so art blades on the sides of the tables yep Potions above each of the drop targets. Yep. They replace the shield, although I'm it like I don't think it's really any better than the original plastic, truth be told. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> yeah, it's there. Honestly. It just kind of I don't mm. know. They, it, it, that one doesn't do anything for me. And then they uh, have the Balrog dancing around, spitting yeah. slime all over the place <laughs> over yeah. here. And that's really raiding everywhere. Yeah, and that's pretty much that's it. it. They yeah. didn't add a whole bunch more. Um, so it's a, like no. I said, it's a very subtle uh, addition there. Now, so I had to go at TPA because I wanted to mm. compare. And one of the things I noticed, and I don't know if you'd noticed this before, but so when you hit a drop target, it drops and then pops right back up um, until you have hit all of the all five of these targets 
Yes, and then they stayed down. Then they stayed down. In Mm -hmm. TPA, it seemed like you hit them and they just stayed down. And then you immediately would drop a ball behind, and then it immediately kicks a ball right back to the upper flipper. flipper. And so that was like Mm -hmm. the first thing that I noticed that was, oh, I don't think the guys at Farsight got that one correct. I don't think so. I think, well, I... I'll have to double check if that was, if, you know, if, if my memory's playing tricks on me there, it, maybe they did have it functioning properly, and I just didn't I do notice until I had tapped them all. Yeah, I do remember the ball, the, the drop targets remaining down, but it wasn't for a long period of time. Yeah. And I have a feeling that's actually a difficulty setting that you can adjust for the upper play field. Okay. So they may have been working with different difficulty settings. The other um, thing I did notice for sure field. is this far right drop target in TPA is completely random. If you can hit it, you cannot backhand it. Yeah, you can't. Whereas here, you can it. very easily backhand it as you should. Be yeah, able it's to. it's a repeatable shot. Yeah. And yes, you need to be able to backhand from there. It's uh, yeah. part of the strategy of that upper play field. And what I do like is the action that they have from when the ball i think when the ball comes off the avengers loop and goes straight in feeds straight into the um the upper playfield area mm, yeah. the 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 way the ball contacts the rubbers on the far left of the playfield yep. there and then bounces, bounces back here and then bounces right about there on your flipper yeah so you can actually get the ball whereas in the in the far side version it was you had to actually like nudge the table to get contact on the ball mm-hmm. um, from memory. So this is or you had to flip it as soon as it dropped. You had to flip immediately. Yeah, you had to flip immediately. You had to do it on on the on the fly. You're right. So the way that they've done that is is better. It's more accurate. Yeah. Here. Oop, I don't know why I zoomed in, but that's okay. I think we're done looking at that for the most part. Um, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, give me my control back. Uh, so anyway, yeah, Swords of Fury, it's definitely a different style of table. Um, yeah, it's actually hybrid alphanumeric too. There's actually one alphanumeric display on the top and then just numerical on the bottom. So very they, similar to, wait, no, that's not very similar to what Funhouse says. No, you're right. That was a different, uh, way Space Station things. is like that. So yeah. Space Station has a similar display and it's because i think space station is also an 11b mm-hmm. um as well so this paves away basically what we're seeing here this paves the way for space station to come in yeah um soon because they've got the, the um display tech worked out for it and it's like really robust like yeah. the the way that this the thing i really like is the display glasses they look really nice and they're, they're not they don't look like they've been like segment animated they actually look really fluid and they yes. respond in the correct way unlike far sites which they were janky as heck really bad um, yeah like like it was the, like it was a simulation of what liquid crystal displays should look like as opposed yeah. to looking like it's an actual liquid crystal display with the fades with the glow um with the segments that you can actually see lit up at yeah. the correct times like it's it really, it's a really good um, representation of what those displays look like in real life. And I'd, I'd just like to make note of that because that's, you know, in cabinet mode, which yeah, we might be talking about a little bit. Well, I was going to say, we're episode. actually, I think we should dip into Move on. that right now mm-hmm. before we talk about uh, the other tables that are going to be available, uh, simply because there is something to note with. Tables like this. Yeah. That is... Um, so basically, I'm going to be speaking about the back glasses. Mm. And that is that although where the score is displayed is kind of where a... Uh, a DMD would where go. Where a DMD would be, yeah. Let me see if I can uh, bring up an image here. Uh, the, the way these games have their um, score glasses, the, their actual um, gas plasma displays laid out, unfortunately, it's really bad for cabinet designs because um, they're all over the place. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's very hard to actually marquee out a section. Okay, there we go. And do it. 
So it still is essentially four uh, four displays. Yeah. Okay. Um, the way Zen has had to approach it is by putting it all into one DMD, basically. Mm. Um, and what I don't care for about that is because once we get true back glass, animated back glasses put in and everything, I really hope Zen incorporates all this down here. Um, why am I not again seeing? Oh, because I'm done. There we go. There is my cursor. So four displays. Um, I want them inclu to include the speakers. <laughs> I'm sorry. I really <clears throat> do. I want that as an option. Um, and I want four separate things because the reason why I say that is on a game like Space Station, it's four displays scattered about the back glass. Yeah. And if we eventually get dynamic back glasses, I want that to be displayed appropriately. That's right. Um, yeah, absolutely. You'll notice that on this back glass, there is some information up and down here that lights yes. accordingly. That's the other reason why we need dynamic back glasses because that system, 11, system 11 puts information on the back glass that is helpful to you, the player. Um, mm. Yeah, it's quite important. Yeah. Every single System 11 has some sort of jackpot bonus count on the back glass. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. B cabinet mode. It has been released. Yeah. It's officially, officially too. It's not cabinet support. It's cabinet mode. Yeah. Which Mel pointed out last when we spoke to him. In fact, that that indicates it's now... It's actually a supported thing. It's not an afterthought. Right. Which is good. Um, but it's very much a placeholder, folks. This is basically to give cabinet folks a chance to play without having to go to weird methods of getting it in cabinet mode. Um, mm. But it's bare bones. There is no UI for cabinet mode. You have to, <laughs> as I discovered today as I was trying to get into it, you have to go into quite a few submenus, you know, into Epic, into FX3, into Systems folder, to where there is a little tab that has some numbers on it, and then you got to enter in your numbers in order to place your second screen and in order to place your DMD. Um, right. If so not, it's not heavily config driven. So I literally had to look up my settings from FX3. Hmm and type those in. Um, whereas in FX3, it's all part of the UI. You can type them in, see immediately it taking place uh, right. you know, to help you know where to go, you know, where you're navigating. Um, so yeah, bare bones in that approach. Uh, the other thing that's kind of disappointing, and again, I get it. They're just getting it out there. <laughs> mm. um, but for right now, to rotate the screen, yeah, you got to do that in Windows. It's not in right. game rotate, uh, which is annoying. And it was in FX3. It was in FX3. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, you basically, I would think that anything you see in FX3, they're working up to that baseline. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. I I 100% agree. So for right now, again, they're just going to they're trying to get something out there for the cab people who always are going to have their monitor rotated. Mm. I, the reason why it bothers me is because I play cab mode on my desktop and my whole monitor can rotate uh, can spin. Yes. so uh, the fact though that I have to take that extra step of going into Windows rotating and then being able to play um, yeah I don't like that mm. uh, I, I had to do that with TPA and didn't like that doing that there either um, yeah it's just it, you know it's a quality of your life thing <laughs> yeah and they'll get there oh they're like again. absolutely going to get there um, what I find said, interesting. Oh, yeah, okay, go, ahead. go ahead. No, no Jinx. Go. <laughs> uh, as Mel was saying, though, th this is all they're doing for cab mode right now. Yep. They're switching uh, all their resources over to getting the consoles ready. Um, so we're not going to mm. see any more development on cab mode until consoles are out. So basically, start firing up your wish list now. Um, let, yeah. let Zen know all the things that you expect. Uh, cab mode to do, but now is not the time to be like, Ugh, you guys, you got this wrong, you got this wrong, you got. 
They no. literally are just getting it out there so that you have a functioning There's cabinet. There's a bare minimum way uh, with with some degree of difficulty that you can actually get your cabinets functioning again with FX yeah. um, to a level that allows you to play them. Um, the other thing that I'd like to point out here, which might have actually been overlooked by some people or perhaps perceived differently, is the way that they're doing the pricing mm. of, of cabinet mode. So in the past, it was, hey, send us pictures of your cabinet and um, you know we, we'll give you a license key and you're on your way. But now it's actually an in-app purchase, essentially. Um, well, not now. Through, it will be. It will be. <laughs> but the thing that I found interesting is the invitation of a pay-what-you-want scheme yep. to this. So a lot of people will probably think, cool, I'll pay one ticket. Thanks. Yeah. You know, for that, because you can pay whatever you like. But I might ask you if you're really passionate about cabinet mode to reconsider that as an idea. Because if I was a developer, if everyone was paying 10 cents for cabinet mode, then I would give it 10 cents of priority as far as a development priority in my list of my long list of things that I need to, to fix or work on for pinball FX. Whereas if we're looking at, you know, maybe more than one ticket, perhaps to a value up to $5, something like that, like, like a cost a of a, ticket. Yeah, like a 50 ticket bundle as a developer that would make me go, right. People actually a want to use this feature and B value it enough to spend more than one ticket on it. So therefore as a developer or a software house, I'm going to invest more developer time into making the cabinet mode better. I wonder so, if I wonder if Zen Okay, here's my thought about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. If I were just wanting to try out cabinet mode, then paying my one ticket to try it out. Uh to see if I even like it, if it's something that's useful. Um, yeah. would it at least give me access? With what you're saying, I I get it and I like the spirit behind it, but it would be interesting if Zen allowed you to, at a later date, go, you know what? Hey, I'm going to throw you more tickets because I liked what you did with cabinet mode. Yeah. yeah. I, it's, it's almost, almost like, like they, they need to, like when, when they, they roll this out, I think a better approach would be try before you buy. Right. Um, here's a 30 day, a 30 day trial on cabinet mode to see if it's right for you because if you're going to set up cabinet mode, chances are you've actually got a cabinet downstairs or upstairs in your second room and you're going to be doing this anyhow. But it's always good to offer that, hey, or even like a seven-day trial or something like that because get it in there, get on your cabinet, get, like use the, you know, the updated interface when that time comes to configure what's the experience like for you, how much do you think it's worth? And then at that point, say, right, your trial's up. How much do you think it, this is worth to you to pay? And then when you're doing that, list the reasons why, you know, so, you know, it's up to you what you pay. But, you know, if you consider these reasons for, you know, giving a little bit more, a little bit less, that might help you understand, you know, what your contribution will actually directly benefit. Yeah. For example, I don't yeah. know. Um. I can already hear people going, oh, you know, they're developers, they should just do it. You know, I can already hear that. Well, but what, what, right what he now, was saying, though, specifically, too, was this was to satisfy the licensors. Yeah. Um, they need to pay something. Yeah, and, and I don't know exactly what that agreement, what that does for the licensors. Uh, maybe it just makes it so that they feel that, like, there's a legit paper trail to... Oh, that's, that's what I think it is. I actually think the it's a... It's, it's an accountability, accountability thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, so how many cabinets are out there? And it's it's also, and as we know, Zen likes this, it's data. Like well, they yeah. know that it, how many people are using cabinet mode, what are they using it on, and all other telemetry that they'd be collecting as well as part of this sort of you know feature. So it's data and being able to track that, yeah. Yeah. Um, which is only good for the platform. It means that they can understand how people are using their products and where to focus their time on. Like, it's just... Right. Yeah. It's necessary. Um, all right. Let's move on from cabinet mode. 
Mm. Let's move on to the other uh, tables, other Williams tables that uh, dropped with this release. Uh, okay, let's see how we're going to I don't have the list in front of me, so I'm going to go off the top oh, of my it's... head. Okay. okay. No Good Gophers. Yep. Which I will say, thankfully, is not like the mobile version in terms of, yes, you can actually shoot that middle ramp from the, uh, from the mid flipper. <laughs> Yeah, and that annoyed the crap out of me with the mobile app that you couldn't yeah. you, you couldn't make the shot. It was impossible. Um, right. uh, Tales of the Arabian Nights, yep. which I will say right now has an issue. I'm sure many... Hey, everybody, let's flood Zen with uh, bug reports on this one. Uh, mm. The captured balls do not register. Makes it impossible for you to increase your multiplier and makes it impossible uh. for you to complete the uh, Tale of the Cyclops. Yay! Yeah. Yeah, I've reported it. I've reported uh, it twice like, already. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's an easy fix, and I'm sure they'll patch it. That being said, Jared pointed this out to me. Holy crap, oh. the fireballs in enhanced mode? Wow. <laughs> they look incredible. Probably one of the best visual enhancements yet in the game. They're bright. I mean, They're if you, bright thought, the little, if you they... thought the little arc on Monsters of uh, Rock was, was bright. Monsters of Rock. Monster Bash. Monster Bash. Um, wow. Yeah, the fireball. This thing like... looks like a lava ball coming at you. It's incredible. Yeah. And the yeah. particle effects on this thing are just mm -hmm. <laughs> crazy. They're yeah. awesome. Yeah, it looks really yeah. good. Love it. Um, it. Visual enhancements on always for this table. Okay, so that's two. Uh, Whitewater. Uh, Whitewater was an interesting one. I'll let um, you go into this it... one. I'm not... It... Talk audio, Jared. <laughs> mm, so... Uh, in so we got access to a the a press release version of the game, and in that version, uh, the the sound was really a lot better in White Water. They had would you say it was the, was it still needing improvement? I mean, I, it was better, it was, but it was still needing improvement. Still room to grow. There was like the the main complaint of the the tinny ticky um, hi hat. Yeah. was removed okay. and that actually pitched it down and it was actually sounding like it should in the yeah. game but there was another problem that was introduced in that the bass line became out of sync with mm. the rest of the orchestration so it was fixing one issue but introducing another one but for my money it was less annoying okay. than than the other one but now when they released the the tables officially to the public version it reverted they they either they didn't they decided not to take the changes over or there was a regression and the the audio is back to actually worse than it was in FX three <laughs> so we've got the the tiki symbol back and the bass orchestration out of alignment with the rest of the music so it's, it's worse <laughs> which is patchable and fixable but yeah. frustrating at the same time because yeah. people were really hanging out for this fix for this table and it kind of didn't quite get across the line, which is a little frustrating. Anyhow, anyhow, okay, the rest so of the table is great. So but... that's, that's three, uh, circus mm. Voltaire circus. And while we're in the circus theme, hurricane. Oh yes. Hurricane. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Forgettable, but it's there. Yeah. Um, just back to circus Voltaire for a moment there. Uh, get looks really great. Mm. Looks nice. The lighting effects, again, the darker lighting helps immensely. Uh, yep. I didn't notice any issue with the, uh, I can't remember if it's the acrobat or the juggler loop uh, being the, the problem um, that I know existed in FX3. Because uh, I think on the third time around, I believe it was the acrobats, It the ball behaved kind of funky, almost went to yeah. a straight down the middle kind of thing. Um I didn't have no, that it issue. seems to be pretty good in this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, of course, just like Attack from Mars, where I was looking for Stroke Multiball, multi here I was looking for Neon, neon Multiball. Multi -ball. And as I keep on pointing out, the ball stays the same intensity of brightness no matter where it is on the table. It's not affected by the GI lights. You will see it glow a little bit brighter near certain lights, like the colors being added to it, but the intensity mm. of the ball never darkens uh, when it goes yep. into a shadow or anything like that. And on Neon Multiball, that's, again, the whole 
point. The ball should only be be lit by the neon on the right hand side of the ramp or on the, mm-hmm. on the table. Yeah, exactly right. And it's it needs to happen eventually. It will, I'm sure. Yeah, but... I mean, if again, if you want the mode to play the way the mode, the design intended, is intended, it wasn't designed for. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly right. Um, but otherwise, it's looking great. And, and I'm really enjoying well. playing Circus Voltaire. Actually, it's Circus Voltaire and and um, it's what it's probably one of my f- more favorite tables in this collection of games. Mm-hmm. And Roadshow is the other one that I, I quite like. As There's well. our last one, Roadshow. Yeah, Roadshow. Uh, upon release, um, everything feels a bit grainy still. Like all the animations and visual effects have this graininess to them. Um, they just feel almost, I don't know how to describe it. Um, uh, like they've got motion blur for me. Mm, okay. Like I'll- when you see, like the, the you, know, you know, when the, the, the air horns fire and they go me and yeah. they vibrate. There's a for me. There's a bit of a blurriness. Maybe it's my graphic settings. I don't well, know. Well, I was just gonna but... say, have you tried turning off motion blur? You know that's a setting. I... Motion blur in the game. Yeah. No, I haven't. No, I didn't it's even realize adva- that was a setting. Yep, it's in the uh, I believe advanced graphic setting. Uh, the advanced tab when you go to graphic or the video. Ah, uh, there's a basic. I have to turn that off. Uh, there is a motion blur tab. Um, that uh, I didn't, I was thinking it was only applying to the ball, but maybe it applies to all the animation too. I don't know. Maybe. Well, if that's the case, I'll need to fiddle around with that yeah. and I'll um, update everyone on the, the next show. The thing I noticed with Roadshow that I immediately wanted to test it about was the left upper ramp. Mm. Uh, there was a big issue with that shot not being able to be made with the ball on the run. Uh, yeah. And I was able to make it with the ball on the run. Yeah, it's way more consistent as, now. as it was intended to. Because in the past, yeah. it was almost like there was too much friction on the ramp up there, and the ball would go yeah. halfway up and then roll right back down. It would never make it. Yeah, it, it was the only really way to, frustrating. Yeah, and the only way to do it seemed to be from a captured standpoint, which is like counterintuitive. <laughs> yeah. A rolling ball should be able to fire faster than a captured ball, but it seemed like the captured ball was the only way to, uh, or a trapped ball on the flipper was the only way to get it up into there. Um, so that seemed like they had made the improvement. That was the only thing that I was really keeping an eye out for on mm. on that one. Yeah, it's it's uh, that one is definitely improved. I think just overall the the on road because roadshow is a weird layout. Yes, like it's got a lot of odd ball paths on it. Well, I would say um, it's it's a lot of odd angles. Yeah, there are a lot of odd angles. Like you have to be really late on the flipper and mm-hmm. to get a lot of the shots. It's a very it's it feels like the risk is higher on that table to actually do well. Mm-hmm. Um, but the thing about it though is if it, it's a very rewarding table once you get into it. Yeah. Um, if I had to buy two tables out of this collection, like if I had to the money <laughs> to buy these two tables, it would be Circus Voltaire and Roadshow. They just really they got really long legs in them. Mm. Um, I mean, uh, Tales of the Arabian Nights is is nice, but it doesn't have the depth. Yeah, like it doesn't have the modes. It doesn't have you can't. The thing I love about Circus Voltaire is how you stack the multi balls. You can stack Juggler and um, Ringmaster together if you time them right. It's just feels so good when you just get them on the all these multi balls going at the same time. The whole thing just goes nuts. It, it actually actively rewards you for doing it. It's yeah. it's amazing. It's really good code in that game. Yeah, Tails is one of those tables that I I would consider a beginner's table. That's a really good one to cut your teeth on as a beginner. Um, yeah. it's, it's it's challenging without being abusive, uh, mm. and it's fairly obvious. Like it does a really good job of telling you what to shoot at, where to shoot at, and it gets you. As a beginner player or a, a table, a person new to a table, there are certain things that I always want to do immediately. I want to hit ramps. I want to get multi ball going. And tails, mm. hitting ramps is easy. Getting multi ball is easy. Um, yeah. And the funny thing is, is it feels like you're wizarding the table a lot quicker than you are on a lot of other tables. 
Oh yeah, because you can collect gems. Like yeah. you collect the um the jewels from the um make a wish and you advance so much faster as a wizard mode. It's like a shortcut to wizard yeah. mode on it. So it makes feeling like you've got to win with wizard mode way, way more accessible for the newer player. Yeah. It's a really good one. It's a really good one to, to do that on. Uh so with that in mind, the other thing that happened, uh Zen is almost implemented all of their uh updates to ticketing that they wanted to do. Mm. Um, this one, they added the ability to now bundle, uh, you make your own bundles with tables, uh, with table packs. The thing that they still have not implemented is uh, what they were talking about with if you have spare tickets, um, them being able to offer you some kind of a, hey, we'll take your remaining 10 tickets for this table, you know, kind of. Like a mop-up discount. Yeah. 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 Um, but and I think that's literally the last thing that they need to implement uh, for a complete ticketing system beyond the absolute, absolute final step, which is allowing your purchases on one system to be accessed on any system. Yeah, cross buy entitlements. Um, which I don't think, obviously, there's no need to get that going until they get the consoles up and running. Consoles. Yeah. That's right. Um, so for those playing in early access right now, and I saw this, and I was like, yeah, you guys got a good point. If you've already bought all the tables, and you're wanting to keep up with it and get the very next table that comes out, well, you're not going to get... You'll get the 33% discount that they offered for the first week, but that's not necessarily how you're going to get the absolute best discount <laughs> on the table, because if you do, according to this thing, if you do pack your bundles correctly you can get up to 46 percent off yeah um and here's what was really interesting that i thought if they're running a sale let's say on star wars tables and then you throw star wars tables in with a couple of other tables and max you can actually just like multi-ball stack your discounts so i'd yeah. be curious to see how much percentage off you could actually get um, with that proper yeah. stacking, I don't think we'll really, yeah, I don't think we'll really see where that can go um, until you talk to somebody that hasn't bought in a single table and waits for one of these packs to go on sale and then tries doing that bundle and see really how much off you can get it. Um, I think there's where Zen's starting to finally realize, or like not not them realizing, uh, materializing what the potential of them handling the in-game purchasing is. Mm, I agree. It's going to be really interesting and to an extent a little bit mathematical probably or a little bit of trial and error to try and work out the best way to package your, your tables. Yeah. Um, but it's going to kind of be, it's going to kind of get to where it was like when you were doing Steam sales, where it was like, well, do I wait for the autumn sale or do I just buy now when they're doing a table pack, you know, for sale, you know, kind of thing. It, it's, it also, it may actually work out to be about the same, which I think is the, the nice thing about it. Yeah. Like you don't necessarily have to just go, ah, oh, I have to miss out on playing them. Yeah. I can actually just buy them now with a relatively safe, understanding that I'm going to get around the same discount level yeah. as I would if I waited for a summer sale or a so I mean, sale. Or... I, I hate to say it, but the early access people are, well, this happens to early adopters all the time, are kind of getting the getting the shaft a little bit for being the <laughs> first bit. adopters, um, as opposed to those of you that are waiting for this to come onto Steam, uh, waiting for this all to come consoles. onto console. Uh, you guys are going to get the full benefit of, of all this. And I think... Uh, yeah. Again, but I don't know. You weigh up the you weigh up the the cost versus enjoyment, right? Factor, you know. And there's look, there's plenty of ways of justifying it. So yeah, I mean, I think ultimately Zen's approach, they're they're they have to go after the broad audience, hmm. and so they're going to get there. Uh, us hardcore players, yeah, you're going to wind up suffering a little bit in the process. Um, yeah. Taking one for the team, if you will, but um, I do think we're not that... talking like a gross. We're not talking about a gross shafting here. We're no. talking about just a minor shafting. Again, for for as as much as I hated the tickets when they first got released, 
Um, each time they do one of these updates, it's softening the blow, and I'm getting the sense of why they're doing and how they're doing and what they're implementing, and I'm like, okay, it's not too bad it. anymore. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. kind of realized what they were doing from the start and think, yeah, I'm fine with this, but yeah, yeah, it's um, good to see it. All right, last bit of business to uh, to talk about because this was kind of like a, hey, wow, where'd that come from? Left field completely. Mm. Uh, Zen, partnering up with Toho Studios and uh, doing a MonsterVerse, uh, some MonsterVerse tables. Godzilla, Kong, who knows what else. Uh, I think they said three tables that they're going to be working on. Um, they said releasing 2022, 2023. Um so that's kind of interesting because once again mm. we're going to be able to do a direct comparison between a stern table godzilla godzilla and zen uh -huh. godzilla and in this time they're not being developed in parallel no there's already uh, like godzilla's out there at the moment so zen it's time to level up <laughs> and de deliver something that you know makes zen makes stern blush with what you can do in a digital table i just hope in the era of, hey, you can only do this digitally, that Godzilla breathes some fire on a ball. <laughs> yeah. Zap or something. Some, something of that. Note. Or or even better yet, oh, this would be amazing. What if Godzilla stomps around and actually destructs part of the play field? Pa as oh, modes? yeah. Like... like, as your story progresses certain areas are stomped on that now reroutes the ball to other areas. Once you complete it, yes. it all resets back to the beginning. So similar in terms of what Stern was doing with their bridge that, that breaks, that breaks or whatever, but let's have some elements on the tape on the play field itself that just <sighs> crumble and go, I don't know, just throw them. Yeah. Out like a, a ramp that like maybe goes this way, gets re-diverted that way and throws the ball into another area of the play field or something. Yeah. I, that would be really rad. There's some I interesting potential here. Um, you know, are we going to get Mothra flying around the table? like a? <laughs> I think we're going to get a whole lot of Godzilla enemies appearing yeah. in these tables for sure. You know, it's going to be it's going to be a big plastic monster fest. That's what it's yeah. going to be. <laughs> so that was that was a really uh, really nice surprise to uh, just get that. You know. Oh, by the way, <laughs> oh. Uh. So we'll have to keep our eyes open and uh, see where that develops and goes from there. Uh, trying to think, is there anything else that we're missing here, Jared? Uh, I don't think so. I think we covered all the the main points. Yeah. Um, in in the the latest pinball show, um, it's going to be interesting to see what comes next. Certainly will. You know, they are releasing. They, I mean, it's going to be more Legacy Williams tables mm -hmm. going out. Well, but I'm, I'm just going to say the <laughs> the hint for the next Williams table. Uh, Akosh is the one that hinted. There's a turn of phrase that he uses in it that makes the next one pretty obvious. I'll let you guys figure what is, it out. What is the turn? Oh, I haven't been keeping up. With oh the yeah, hints. you didn't watch it yet. Um, I will have to watch it. But I believe the turn of phrase was that. Uh, I want to say it's a table reborn. Table reborn. I believe. Oh, it's okay. something of that nature. I could be wrong, but anyway, if you can put two and two together, uh, regardless of if I got that quote right or whatever, it's kind of obvious what's coming next. <laughs> I have to watch. I have to catch up. Yeah. And I'm sure I'll get it. Yeah, yeah. you'll get it. Um, so I think I don't think people really got the clues about Swords of Fury. I'm the... sorry. Those clues were not about Swords of Fury. Those clues were no. about Congo. <laughs> they they those seem clues to be. match up with the first chapter of Congo like to a T. Yeah, right. They had nothing to do with Swords of Fury. There is no, no. there's no jungle in Swords of Fury. There's no machete in Swords of Fury. There's no low growling rumble from the brush in Swords of Fury. It's Congo. <laughs> yeah. It, mm. So yeah, I don't I know think... what I don't know the, that that whole that whole where they were given the hints was on Facebook, folks. Yeah. Um, I don't know that that didn't line up with Swords of Fury in the least. So no, I think it started to at the end. Um, but that that was probably it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Well, and I guess in Discord, Mel mentioned that the Congo license is very convoluted, mm. surprisingly, which tells me they're looking into it. <laughs> yes, yeah. they're trying. They're, they're investigating, and it doesn't doesn't surprise me in the least because Congo Paramount. Is Congo Paramount. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. Yeah. So I think you know we can we can we can expect it in the future. I would think. Yeah, I. But it's well, not going to be in. Too. It's not going to be in a hurry, I don't think. I think there's a lot of things to work out with it. Yeah. But, you know, add it to your list. I think it will be coming out at some point. Yeah. yeah. Based on what we've seen publicly so far. All right. Well, uh, that's about all we have then for today. Uh, like I said, next next time, um, I'm going to try and put together something about Gravatar. Uh, yeah, I'll have it, a, hopefully, or whatever access. the heck it is. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have a little break from pinball and go and fly around a maze in a gravity-driven um, spacecraft. Yeah, exactly. Sounds pretty rad. Um, Sounds rad. And we'll see if uh, if any other news uh, pops up. I mean, like I said, we we never set out to become just the stern or the stern the Zen update <laughs> channel, but they're pretty much the only game in town. Um, it's kind of a bit difficult. Yeah, I mean. I think some people in the past have suggested that we go down the path of, you know, visual pinball and doing that. But yeah, I, I don't know. I, wanna... I, I like staying with within the license world. And, yeah. Uh, the the vision, I, I always refer to it as, it's like saying, hey, I'm a fan of animation. And then somebody going, oh, you should check out anime. Mm. And then you see how many hundreds of thousands of videos there are, and you go, "I don't even know where to begin." <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. Visual Pinball Ten or X, however you want to say it, there is so much there, and it's a whole world unto itself. And if you really want to talk VP Ten, I suggest you start your own YouTube channel. <laughs> Yeah, you'll have lots of content to talk about. That's for sure. I'll watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. I will add you and ring the bell as well. <laughs> um, all right. Well, until then, I guess uh, we're gonna say adios. And uh, well, we told you what we'll do next time, but then Jared always likes to say and stuff and things because that's what we do. That's what we love. All right, folks. Bye bye. See you later.